Steve Harrison here helped scammers steal $1.3 billion from thousands of people. Now that I've exposed his real identity, he wants you to believe that he had no way of knowing Hyperverse was a fraud when they hired him to use a fake name and pretend to be their CEO. He also wants you to know that he's really sorry. We're sorry. What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and last week, Sarah Martin at The Guardian wrote an article about Stephen Reese Lewis, the fake CEO of the $1.3 billion crypto scam Hyperverse. And in that article, Sarah Martin talked about how she was unable to prove any of the details in Stephen Reese Lewis's resume. None of the colleges that he claimed to have degrees from had ever heard of him, and none of the companies he ever worked for had either. And after reading that article, I used facial recognition software along with a little bit of obsessive compulsive disorder to track down Stephen Reese Lewis and find out that his real name was really Steve Harrison from Bangkok, Thailand. And then yesterday in The Guardian, I saw this article also by Sarah Martin who managed to track down Steve O. Harrison. And he says, I do feel bad about this. Englishman who posed as Hyperverse CEO says sorry to investors who lost millions. We're sorry. The man who posed as the CEO of the collapsed crypto scheme Hyperverse has confirmed that he was paid to act the part, receiving 180,000 Thai baht, which is only about $7,500, over nine months, along with a free suit as payment. Stephen Harrison, an Englishman who lives in Thailand, who posed as Chief Executive Stephen Reese Lewis for the launch of Hyperverse in late 2021 and early 2022, has told Guardian Australia that he was shocked to learn the company had presented him as having fake credentials to promote the scheme. He said he felt sorry for those who had lost money in relation to the scheme. Sorry. A scheme which he says he had no role in, that is other than the lead role as the CEO. And Chainalysis estimates that $1.3 billion was stolen in 2022 alone. I am sorry for these people, he said. We're sorry. Because they believed some idea with me at the forefront and believed in what I said, and God knows what these people have lost, and I do feel bad about this. We're sorry. But this is not just any ordinary sorry, folks. Stephen went on to say, I do feel deeply sorry for these people. I really do. We are deeply sorry. Harrison went on to say, you know it's horrible for them. I just hope that there is some resolution. I know it's hard to get the money back off these people or whatever, but I just hope there can be some justice served in all of this where they can get to the bottom of this. And well, it will be hard to get any money back because besides phony acts of regret, Steve Harrison is claiming he had no role in this scam and therefore he is not going to be forthcoming with all of the information he clearly has about the people who perpetrated this scam and anything else that might actually give those people a chance of recovering some of the money that they lost. Steven said he wanted to make clear that he had certainly not pocketed any of the money lost by investors. This is about 15 seconds after telling us he was paid 180,000 Thai bot for the role along with his free suit, but he didn't make any money, folks. Being an underpaid criminal doesn't make you innocent. It just makes you a lousy negotiator on top of being a lousy person. I don't think that meager paycheck he's claiming here is really going to do him any good in court, and it's certainly not going to do any good for the people that he helped to rip off. I was told I was acting out a role to represent the business, and many people do this, Harrison said. Yeah, lots of people pretend to be the CEO of a multi-billion dollar international crypto fraud. He said he trusted his agent and accepted that. After reading through the scripts, he said he was initially suspicious about the company he was hired to represent because he was unfamiliar with the crypto industry, but said he had been reassured by his agent that the company was legitimate. Steven seems awfully eager to throw that agent under the bus here. Steven goes on to say, I went away and I actually looked at the company because I was concerned that it could be a scam, Harrison said. So I looked online a bit and everything seemed okay, so I rolled with it. So here Harrison is admitting that he suspected it was a scam, that he knew this was not a work of fiction, that they weren't filming a movie here, that he was being portrayed as a legitimate businessman, and yet he went on to pose with a fake name and a fake job title for promotional materials. Harrison said he had been told in his second recording that he needed to use a fake name. 
I asked why, and they were like, well, you know, you're an actor, you're acting the role, you're presenting the business, and my agent said, there's that agent again, many people do this in the business, this is perfectly normal. Yes, if I had a nickel for every perfectly legitimate business that hired an actor to pretend to be their CEO under an assumed name, I would have no freaking nickels. And the Guardian article even goes on to mention me in this channel in the 20th paragraph. After Guardian Australia's report, a US-based YouTuber, Jack Gamble, revealed Harrison's true identity, and this prompted Harrison to come forward to share what he knew. You're goddamn right. Now, as of the making of this video on January 11th, Stephen Harrison remains a free man despite his obvious involvement in an obvious fraud that ripped off thousands, maybe tens, hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world. This guy is yet to see a set of handcuffs. But if and when Stephen finally does end up taking away in bracelets, he will not be the first one associated with this scam arrested. Check this one out, also in The Guardian from a few days ago, Hyperverse crypto promoter Bitcoin Rodney arrested and charged in the U.S. A promoter of the Hyperverse crypto investment scheme has been arrested and charged in the U.S. for his alleged role in this scheme, with court documents claiming he was part of a network that made fraudulent promotional presentations to investors and potential investors. Rodney Burton, who goes by the name Bitcoin Rodney, was arrested in Florida on Friday and remains in custody pending transfer to Maryland, where the charges were laid. He's been charged with operating and conspiring to operate an unlicensed money transmitting business. The IRS alleges in court documents that a network of promoters of the hyper schemes made fraudulent promotional presentations for an investment operation that generated revenue from Bitcoin mining, which the IRS alleges did not exist. It is the first time charges have been laid against anyone involved in the Hyperverse scheme. And much like Steve Harrison's phony shock at being used in a crypto fraud, imagine my phony shock that this guy ended up being a crook. Here he is standing in front of his purple Lambo with his name on it, wearing shorts with his initials on them, and a t-shirt with his name on it, and a hat with his name on it. And here's that purple Lambo again with a rear license plate with its name on it. Um, a purple Lambo that is in the process of getting repoed here, coming soon to a police impound lot near you. There goes Bitcoin Rodney's purple Lambo. And I just want to take a moment to send a shout out to Danny DeHeck, aka the Crypto Ponzi Scheme Avenger. Danny's also got a YouTube channel. I'm going to put a link to that down below. A lot of the research and the investigative work that exposed the hyperverse for being the fraud that it is was done by Danny along with several other crypto sleuths that have been working on this for the better part of a year and a half. So head over to Danny's channel, hit that like button, subscribe, and tell him nobody sent you. He deserves a high five for the work he's been doing to protect investors from these crooks. So long story short, when the Hyperverse people approached Steve Harrison and asked him to use a fake name to pretend to be their CEO, he had no way of knowing this was not a legitimate business other than the fact that they had just asked him to use a fake name and pretend to be their CEO. And he wants you to know that he's really sorry. I'm deeply sorry. Just a reminder, folks, that everybody is sorry after they've been caught and just like Sam Bankman-Fried and every other crook that's ever been exposed, Stephen Harrison is of the unique disposition that he's innocent, and that he had no idea it was a scam. But don't worry, folks. He's really, really sorry. We're sorry. Don't you believe those fake words of remorse for a second? Not only has he stolen from thousands of people, but now he's insulting their intelligence by feigning ignorance. And this guy clearly has information that can lead to the arrest and the breakup of this crypto fraud all over the world. He's withholding that information to cover his own butt. And if he really cared about his thousands and thousands of victims, he would come clean with that information. But he won't do that because he's a liar and a crook. Until next time, live small and dream big.